This video starts with a bit of screen roll here. I'll try and uh, minimize that. But the main idea here is to show you this morphing effect on a wall. There is a reason for this sort of, sort of flickering effect. It's, it's quite annoying and to be honest, it is visible out the side of your eye with the real thing. It's something that could be improved. But the main thing about this is this is a laser orb projector, which I think is being discontinued by a local shop called Argus. And it's a great effect, and the way it achieves this morphing, planetary effect, uh, this cosmic space scene, is very clever indeed, but also very simple. So to show you that, let's take it to bits. Here it is in the light, and this is a product that uh, uh, Argus has stocked for a while. It really is quite an old effect, and that's reflected somewhat in the fact that the power supply is a brick. It's one of these heavy ones, and it's rated 12 volts AC at 300 milliamps, and it does supply AC to the lamp for a very specific reason. The base uh, can sort of swivel on a sort of line, really stiff, but it lets you ch choose the angle. It's got an on-off button, that's the only control over it, and it's got the uh, AC inlet here. There's a dome in top so that if you just want the visual effect you can leave the dome on but if you want to project it around the room which is great but it does require a dark room you can take the cover off and see the guts which is this rotating lens disc and it's the rotating lens disc that is the really interesting thing in this. I should also mention this thing has three lasers. They're only low power, sort of 660 nanometer one watt lasers. One watt? If they were one watt it'd be great, but they're not. Uh, one milliwatt lasers. One there, one there, and one there. And it's got a ring of nine LEDs. Three red, three green, three blue. And they're the bit that flicker. And the reason they flicker is because the pulse of the modulation, when it makes its transition from red to green to blue to red again, is very low frequency. And it does I initially thought it was the just pure smoothing and it was like the 50 hertz from the uh, or 100 hertz from the power supply, the rectified AC. But in reality, you notice the flickering most when it's changing between colors. So this is not supposed to come off, but in most it does. I have taken some of these apart in the past before. So I'm going to zoom down now just so we can take a closer look at what's inside. And so I can shoot the camera with lasers. So... Let's find something I can use to focus on this. Let's find a little uh, instruction sheet here. I'm just going to put that down there. I'm going to focus on that. I think that's focused. So the lens is domed. I can take this off right now, in fact. Perhaps I should turn it off because it does have a laser inside it. I will turn it off because of the laser, but I'll show you what it looks inside first. The circuit board with the circle of lasers, uh, circle of LEDs, and then the little lasers at the side in the little mountings. Let's turn it off. So the really important bit here is the lens. And the lens is, it's almost like pebbles. It's it's a clear lens, but instead of just a pattern of regular lenses, it's got this lovely effect of random lenses all over, and that creates the weird morphing effect of the sort of where the lenses all interact with each other. It sort of focuses and defocuses the light to create that sort of pattern. Do I have a light source here that I could shine through this right now onto the bench? Hold on, give me a second. I should have my keychain light. I do have my keychain light, so if I carefully uh, hold all my works keys out of sight and I turn this flashlight on at full intensity, I should be able to get the effect. You can see the effect there, it projects this amorphing effect when you shine the light through it. It's very good. I wonder how you could make one of these lenses. I have seen something similar at Disney. Um, because Optokinetics did a, a version of this disc for their projectors, but it was actually pools, random pools of coloured uh, paint that they'd dripped on in sort of little blobs, let harden, and then they'd added more colours. And where the colours touched, uh, one was hard, the other was soft, it would actually create a sort of morphing lens at that point. We used loads of those projectors in Disney Paris Animation Walkthrough. It was pointing into a dome. Optokinetics, I wonder if they still make those discs. The circuit board, well let's uh, take things out here. 
So there's a screw there. I should mention that there's a common issue with these things. I get the feeling that the reason that Argus are discontinuing them is because they are a bit quirky. The middle of the lens here, they didn't really allow for a even layer for the screw. So when you drill the hole through, sometimes these lenses sit squint, but also the pivot in the middle, the actual, the, the um, uh, axle, the, what's the best, uh, the shaft that comes through that rotates slowly, um, is also a, a, often at a wonky angle in this. It just seems to be an issue with plastic molding. And often when you put the lids in these, it will jam against this uh, layer here. Sometimes uh, I've also found in the past that some of these, because I've had a few of them, uh, the gearing mechanism, you'll see the gearing mechanism in a minute, occasionally uh, jams because of the, the, well, it's not a precisely made unit. So here's the circuit board. We'll tell you what, let's analyze the circuit board first for what we can see, and then I shall reverse engineer it. So let's focus down on that. There's a bridge rectifier. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that it's a bridge rectifier here. Uh, possibly that's a smoothing capacitor. I see three transistors with suitable series resistors and the uh, base resistors for the LEDs. I see a little cob thing, chip on board, a little blob here on a li little linear circuit board. These things used to be really common in musical Christmas cards and other effects where they just wanted to add an effect and it was cheaper to do this and make a chip. So they basically put the chip onto a circuit board and covered it in resin, COB chip on board. And then there's a slot in the circuit board and then they just slot it through and solder onto the pads. It's a, a really common approach to this. There's an R3 identical value resistors. I'm guessing they might be going over to the LEDs. And a big resistor, I see Zener diodes, DZ1, DZ2, lots of Zener diodes, or Zener diodes if you if you so prefer. Okay, so let's lift this circuit board out. The lasers are mounted down little pillars like that. Hopefully this is in focus. Is this in focus? I'm just gonna check it's in focus. It looks oh. Okay, whether it looks okay on a huge high resolution screen is an unknown variable. So these little lasers, are they glued in? Let's try and stay in shot. The lasers are just pressed in and they look as though they might be focusable. Little circuit board, like a basic standard laser module that has just been sat down the pillar and then a little sleeve put in the top. That's not going in quite as easily as it came out. Okay, so that's the lasers. Uh, the motor, and here's why, let's zoom out a little tiny bit. The reason it's fed with AC is because this motor is an AC motor, and uh, that results in a fairly low speed motor, which is then further geared down. And it's quiet, and it's just very, very simple. It's a really common motor, so there it is. And it's unfortunately this interface between this wheel here, which which slips in the shaft, which is probably part of it. Uh, and this here, oh, that is really stiff. Why is that so stiff? Let's loosen this up. Let's just loosen it and see if that uh, makes it looser. No, it's relatively loose. There's a lot of wiring in here that kind of gets in the way. Let's just take everything out. So we've got a little uh, support here for that shaft. And we've got the shaft itself just going into a hole at the bottom in the middle of a pillar, which uh, looks kind of central. It's just kind of, there's something wonky about the design of this light that the, one of the plastic mouldings just doesn't seem quite right. And it seems very common amongst them that causes the shaft to be at a slight angle. And also the plate that never seems to screw down properly onto that shaft. Right, so tell you, oh, why is there hot melt glue around the back of the LEDs? That's odd. Why have they done that? That's really weird. Heat dissipation? I doubt it. I'm not sure why they've got hot melt glue over the LED contacts. That's strange. Anyway, I'm going to reverse engineer the circuit board and then we'll take a look at the circuitry. One little bit of reverse engineering later. Um, let's start at the very beginning here. It throws up a few surprises in this circuit. 
The AC comes in and it goes straight to the motor. Let me just see if I can see that in the circuit board here. That's these contacts here. Oh, I'm going to have to bring this in further. These contacts here where the AC comes in and just loops straight out to the motor. It then goes to a full bridge rectifier, uh, which is based on... Oh, let's zoom out a tiny bit here. Let's zoom out just a tad. It's based on four discrete one amp diodes. Very common. And then that is a smoothing capacitor of that. It's 220 megafarad, uh, 25 volts. Now it's 12 volts AC coming in and it gets smooth and it ends up uh, rectifying the smooth. It comes out at 14.5 volts. I would have expected to actually nudge up a bit higher. It's usually 1.41, which I would expect. Let's bring in the, the calculator, the incredibly pink calculator. It says, it's supposed to say Sassy Squad, but Vince, the crew chief, has already modified this with a Sharpie. He's already drawn a cock and balls in the back as well. Yes, indeed, this is not surprising on this particular job. Uh, so, the calculator, let's work out. Um, 12 volts AC times 1.41. I'd have expected about 17 volts, but it actually comes down to 14.5. And I wonder if there's quite a lot of ripple. I wonder if this capacitor is just a bit low for that. But uh, no, I don't think that's creating the ripple of this a visual effect. Loud thumping noise, I put the calculator back up. But the supply is converted from AC to DC. It's partially smoothed by this. And then the first thing circuit to notice is the three lasers. The three, I've drawn them as LEDs, three lasers in series with a 220 ohm resistor. The 220 ohm resistor is this fairly beefy one. It looks as though it could be rated half watt to one watt. And each of those, uh, this also explains the high number of Zener or Zener diodes. There's a diode in inverse parallel with each one of the lasers. And I'm guessing the reason for that is that if the current through it was a... Well, I'm guessing they might be three volt laser modules because ultimately that caps it down to 2.8 volts. And I don't know if those are three volt zeners or if it's just the, you know, the current limiting here um, and the voltage dropping down across the... Uh, the lasers themselves results in that voltage. Maybe if you turn the voltage up, it would rise up to the point that it did actually clip with the Zener diodes. But they will just basically cap the voltage uh, across those. I guess there's a possibility that if a laser fails, the Zener diode will also shunt it and cut out that uh, sort of chunk of the voltage that's being dropped across there. The resistor uh, is dropping about 6 volts, which, uh, if we calculate that... I cal yes, calculated 27 milliamps. Hold on. Let's uh, work out the power dissipation of the resistor. Uh, 0.027. Oh, I'll tell you. How, I'll show you how I worked out the current. So I measured six volts across the resistor. It's a 220 ohm resistor. I equals voltage six divided by the value of the resistor, which is 220 ohms, gives the current passing through that. It's a very accurate way of measuring that. So it's 27.272727 milliamps. Let's say 27 milliamps. And that multiplied by the voltage being dropped will give the power dissipation. It's only uh, 0.16 watts. That's really, really low. This 2K resistor, I think, is doing a bit more. It's most likely to be getting a bit hotter because that resistor there forms part of the power supply. Now, here's an odd thing. Normally, things like this would be referenced down to the zero volt rail, and you'd have NPN transistors pulling down. But in this case, they've got this little blob chip, the RGB chip, with its own power supply here based on the current limiting resistor, a Zener diode, a 100 megafarad capacitor, and that just provides that with a DC supply, but reference to the positive rail. And they've used PNP. Uh, transistors, and I'm guessing the reason for that might be that the outputs of this are designed to drive LEDs, so it's probably designed to drive pull down to the negative rail. Um, and if you were just using this chip with LEDs, you'd basically connect a resistor and an LED from the positive to each of those outputs. But because they're using sort of reverse, they're using the negative supply to turn on the transistor. So they're doing that with three identical circuits. Here's the three LEDs, three red, three green, and three blue. I've only showing one circuit here, but this circuit is basically multiplied times three. And we've got the 1K resistor that limits the current to the base of the 8550 transistor, which is PNP. 
and we've got a 10k resistor going to the positive rail which normally pulls that PNP transistor off. PNP transistors just work the opposite to the, the NPN, whereas NPN would pull to the zero volt rail, uh, PNP transistors pull to the positive volt rail. And likewise, uh, whereas with an NPN transistor, you'd uh, have to provide it with a positive uh, current limited supply of about uh, 0.6 volts or above to turn it on. With uh, uh, PNP, you supply it with a sort of negative, you pull it down to the zero volt rail to turn the transistor on. And that's what they're doing here. And there is a resistor rather oddly in the emitter circuit of the PNP transistor, as opposed to down here. Not sure if they're using that as part of the current limiting. But uh, they've got two values of resistor, 100 ohms for the blue and the green channels, which have a higher LED voltage, and 120 ohms for the red LEDs. And that's it. It's a very straightforward circuit. This here is the culprit for that flickering. That's what's doing that. I don't think it's the sort of low value of the smoothing capacitor here. So things that are worth salvaging from something like this, it's a nice effect in its own right. It could do with being rebuilt. You'll be able to feel if you've got problems with the disc sticking, check that it's uh, clear of this or just remove this completely. Um, did that even show that? Hold on, I'm just going to zoom back out again. There we go. Let's, uh, let's be sensible about this. So if you've got one of these units and the disc is erratic or sticking, a couple of things to look at are whether it's touching this, you'll often hear a noise as it scrapes against it or just you'll see it touching it. You can remove this to get rid of that. The other thing appears to be the bearing system because that is very stiff. It spins easily in that, but when you've screwed it in and it goes into that little insert down below, the sort of pillar, it seems to tighten that up. So it might be worth, you know, if you have problems with this, even loosen this just so it can actually uh, level itself off and spin more freely. And that's it. I suppose a modern version of this might be very much like the those light bulbs that uh, project lots of coloured stars. They've got the hyper red, green and blue LED. It'd be nice to see one of these discs in that, but rotating much slower than those ones rotate it. Um, other things worth mentioning, the middle pattern of the lens, which is the magic ingredient here, has quite big lenses, but the outer edge has lots of little indentations and lenses, and that's the one that rides over the lasers. And when you fire the lasers through uh, rippled glass like that, it really scatters the beam. Instead of getting a dot, you tend to get these warping effects with lots of striating and interference pattern lines morphing and twisting. It's a very complex effect. If you look back at the beginning of the video and you look at the effect, then you'll see the, the what happens when you shine the lasers through that. It's used professionally in, in dedicated laser uh, sort of projector units that uh, have glass rippled, basically toilet glass, rotating very slowly in front of fairly high power lasers to project these warping patterns onto domed ceilings. I think MGM Grand in Las Vegas had uh, a system like that for projecting to their dome inside this sort of main food hall. Very nice effect. Very simple effect. So this is a this is being discontinued as far as I can see. The price is coming down. They're not in stock in all stores. It's if you search in the Argus catalog for a laser sphere, you'll probably find them. But just be aware that it's a bit flickery, not perfect, but you could modify that. This circuit board here, you could do what I did in one of them. Um I cut the transistor off that did the red LEDs and I bridged the collector and emitter for the blue and green so that just the blue and green stayed lit all the time. I'm wondering now if that's uh, going to actually overdrive the LEDs. If those, if that uh, emitter resistor is actually acting as a current regulator, it didn't seem to have that effect. But um, lots of possibilities. It's an interesting light. It's a very good visual effect. It's almost a shame they're discontinuing it. It would have been nice if they'd done a more modern version, and maybe they will, but feeling that uh, if you've ever seen something like this on eBay being currently manufactured and sold, but in a maybe a more modern version, it'd be interesting to know what that is. So that's it. The laser sphere from Argus. It's very neat. It's a really nice effect, and it does project quite brightly at night as well. So it's good. I like that.